So by this point, we should all understand where electricity comes from. But the real question is, how does it work? And the answer is, science. Electricity is made up of flowing electrons. Electrons have a negative charge. Let's look at a circuit diagram. On a circuit diagram, electricity moves from positive to negative. We call this conventional current. It's what we use in engineering. So let's focus on the basics here. Have you ever heard of something called a conductor? What makes a material conductive? Well, it has to do with the atomic structure. Electrons float around in the atom. In the atomic structure, electrons live in this area called the electron cloud. You've probably seen a Bohr model before. Bohr models aren't entirely scientifically accurate, but they help us to get an idea of the atomic structure and the way things are. It turns out that the electrons in the outermost orbital determine how conductive or how freely electrons can move through something. The number of free spots there are in the outside orbital of an atom tell us how freely electrons can move inside and out of that element. This tells us whether a material is conductive or not. Most of the materials that we would call metals are conductive for this reason. There aren't very many electrons in the outermost orbital of the atom structure. An insulator is the opposite of a conductor. Insulators do not allow electrons to move freely through them because there aren't very many free spaces in that outer orbital. Electricians wear rubber gloves and rubber boots to protect themselves from the electricity that they are working on while they're on the job because rubber is an insulator. That's why when we are looking at wires, we'll notice that the inside part is metal, which allows the electricity to move through it, and the outside part is either rubber or plastic to protect you from the electricity. When we talk about circuits and electricity, there are three main units that we use voltage, resistance, and current. Voltage is a little complicated, so we need to use an analogy to help us to understand voltage. So picture a water tank. If we turn the faucet, what makes the water come out? Well, that's pressure. If the faucet is closed, the pressure is still there. Voltage is just like water pressure. It pushes the energy from the electrical source, such as a battery, to where it's needed, and then back to the other end of the battery. We measure voltage in a unit called volts. Crazy naming, right? If we continue to use water as an example, current is the amount of electricity that moves through a circuit per second. So current is like the amount of water that is flowing down a path. So if the tank is full, the current is gonna be really high. If the tank is empty, there's no current. So if we turn off the water faucet, the current is off. There is no current flowing because it has nowhere to go. If the faucet is open, the current is free to move. Current is measured in amperes, but we call them amps for short. The last unit that you need to know is resistance. Resistance is anything that's resisting the flow of electricity through a circuit. Oftentimes this resistance is actually what's using the electricity in the circuit, such as a light bulb. Sometimes the materials in our circuit actually have internal resistance. So the wires themselves might be preventing the electricity a little bit, and the battery or the power source, whatever that may be, may have some resistance in it too. For the scope of this class, we're gonna ignore internal resistance and focus on the resistance that's provided by what's using the electricity. The more things that we have on our circuit, the slower the current is going to move. The more resistance that's blocking the current the slower it's going to go. It's like a rock in our water analogy. Resistance is measured in a unit called ohms, and it has a special symbol. We use the Greek symbol omega for resistance. So, resistance is measured in ohms. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video with us. We hope you learned something. If you like what you saw, hit the like button. For more awesome engineering videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.